Hello, this is Martin Gore from Depeche Mode. Hi, this is Dave Garn from Depeche Mode, and you are listening to My Nerd Road. It is my nerd world, and welcome to it, Depeche Mode, the podcast. A bit of a short period of time between episodes, but we got stuff to talk about. I hope your uh, 4th of July week was uh, absolutely fantastic, as I'm still uh, on vacation until Monday, if you're here uh, listening to this in America. If you're not, I just hope you had a great week, if you're anywhere other than the United States. So, and again, thank you so much for checking out this week's um, episode. Being on vacation, uh, I've been spending a lot of time listening to music. Memento Mori, not a huge surprise there. Uh, also, I've uh, been watching quite a bit of Depeche Mode put in uh, 101. Don't know why. I just was in an, a, uh, an absolute nostalgic mood and uh, wanted to sit down and watch a 101. So I watched a bit of it last night, probably finish uh, the rest of it this evening as I partake in uh, some spiced rum as always i like to hear from you so you can email me talkshownerd at gmail uh, dot com now i don't recall whether or not we were getting any advanced warning of uh remixes for wagging tongue i know that earlier this week there was some uh there was a smattering of sort of we may get some 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 more music this week uh, no b-sides attached to this but then it was announced on um, I guess Wednesday going into Thursday, one of the, I believe, um, Japanese websites had a posting where they offered some samples of the mixes, had a chance to listen to that before I officially officially got to sit down and listen to uh, the remixes uh, this morning. And I want to share with you uh, my thoughts of each of the, uh, of the tracks. I will say overall uh, that... Uh, this selection of remixes I'm enjoying quite a bit more than I did the Ghost Again remixes. Now, that being said, that's really not saying much. I really did not enjoy the Ghost Again remixes. But let me run through these uh, quickly and give you uh, give you my thoughts. Um, so, uh, first off, we have Wagging Tongue featuring Kid Moxie. This was an interesting uh, remix, actually. Uh, would make, in my opinion, a nice addition if we did an official Memento Mori remix collection that had more reworkings and remixes. That's what this felt like. It was more of a reworking of the track with additional vocals from um, Kid Moxie that I felt went very well with Martin and Dave on the track. A little untraditional, almost a B-side reinterpretation, but I really enjoyed it. Um, It's actually one that I'll probably be giving multiple listens to and in the future when I compile um, as I usually do with Depeche Mode uh, albums at some point in time I put together a compilation of the tracks in order but different versions just to listen to a different full version of the album from start to finish and this particular reinterpretation remix of a wagging tongue would certainly make a great addition um, to a playlist like that. Uh, The Wet Leg uh, remix, finally a sort of proper remix. Um, I would have liked something similar to this for Ghosts Again. It has a very cool vibe, genuinely um, sets it apart from the original version of Wagging Tongue. Um, Not necessarily, when I mean a proper remix, I mean that something that isn't more um, conducive for the club which is what we got for the majority of Ghost Again uh, remixes. This was something that was more of a sort of a proper song remix of the track in the same vein as the Kid Moxie one as well, but I did quite enjoy it. Another one that I will probably be giving some multiple listens to. Um, the uh, the Edu, uh, Imbaranon, and Clementi mix sounds like they used a sample from a Sufferwell uh, remix, ran that in the background, Um so far, three for three on the remixes, in my opinion. In as much as this mix also keeps the vocals intact and includes a nice added electro melody that I quite liked. Um, so far, uh, my favorite for that addition alone of that melody that's included in the in the track. So pleasantly surprised as I was listening to um, this uh, this set of remixes. Then we get into what we've typically been getting of Depeche Mode remixes, although they they are a little bit better. Um, starting with the Daniel Avery mix, uh, repetitive dance track, 
I appreciate the lyrics not being completely and the vocals not being completely excluded. Um, I can't help but wonder, uh, due to the nature of Wagging Tongue being a shorter song, if, if it provided an opportunity to keep the vocals in a lot of these mixes. Um, it's a nice enough remix. Switches it up. Um, so far, I can imagine actually throwing the entire remix collection on in the background. Um, each track and the tracks themselves are so far versatile um, enough. Uh, we get to the uh, Henning Bayer mix. Didn't do a whole lot for me. Again, good background music. Unrecognizable as this being um, a remix of Wagging Tongue. Again, something that was clearly made for more of the uh, of the nightclub. Um, speaking of a club mix, the Houghton uh, Geyser mix, Geyser mix, um, not really what I'm into anymore in terms of techno music. This kind of sounds like the stuff from the um, from the late uh, late '90s, uh, going into early 2000s. Um, and again, it's it's not bad, but something that I would have you know more akin to what we got with Ghosts again. Uh, the Gabe Guernsey remix. Um, interesting that they grabbed the. Um, relax from relax enjoy the ride vocal when i heard the relax sample in this mix i immediately thought of frankie goes to hollywood and it's probably the most noteworthy aspect of the mix um you know now of these club mixes i i do enjoy the sampling and the driving beats more so than the previous two uh mixes in this uh in this collection including the fact that they kept the vocals in the track. And that's one thing that I'm actually very appreciative of, uh, of all these remixes is that almost all of them didn't completely strip away um, the, uh, the vocals, uh, you know, in their entirety from the, from the songs, which has happened so often when it comes to Depeche Mode remixes these days. Um, Kimi's enjoy the ride dub. Again, the artist also zeroed in on using relax that vocal and using that as a sample. Um, another, again, driving dance track that was okay. I still miss, and I was uh, texting back and forth with my buddy Matt, I still mi uh, miss the good old days of an extended remix keeping the song intact. Um, but in the absence of hopes and desires of what I want or what I would have made, um, this is still a better remix package than Ghosts Again was. Uh, and as I said earlier, I might throw this on in the background or while maybe going out on a bike ride to keep myself motivated. So um, it definitely was a step up from the Ghosts Again uh, remixes, which is a bit of a bummer for me because Ghosts Again is one of my favorite tracks off the album. While Wagging Tongue was way down on the list, I have really come around to enjoy that song, and I think that's why I would have really liked to have gotten a proper extended um, remix that took advantage of the the better aspects of the track in and of itself. But that being said, as far as remix collections go, you know, I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10. Um, and again, keeping in mind the quality of the remixes that we, you know, typically <laughs> typically get um, these days. So, as always, I would love to know what uh, what you think. Uh, drop me an email, talkshownerd at, uh, at gmail.com. Uh, All right, before I get to the listener uh, feedback this week, I want to mention one thing, not Depeche Mode related, but something you might be interested to hear about. I was never a Wham! fan. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily even call myself a George Michael fan either. I enjoy his albums. Um, Playing for Time from um, A Listen Without Prejudice is, um, apart from Depeche Mode songs, putting those aside, probably in my top ten, maybe top five favorite songs of all times. Um I was never a big Wham! fan. Now, that being said, what I thought was really interesting is that watching, and this is what I wanted to discuss, the Wham! documentary on Netflix, I suddenly realized that I actually enjoyed this music a lot more than I thought. So if you didn't know, there is a documentary about Wham! And it just chronicles Wham! Um, not to spoil anything, but the end of the documentary is sort of the 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 point when George Michael ended up leaving Wham to go on and become the icon that he that he became. So it is strictly a Wham documentary. Uh but an interesting snapshot of 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 80s pop 
and this band, a backstory that I was completely unaware of, and a documentary that I will probably be watching again. I enjoyed it that much. So even if you weren't a Wham! fan, you may end up being in a position like I was when I'm watching this going, oh my gosh, I actually really did enjoy this music a lot more than I thought, and went and you know grabbed the albums off of... Um, uh, off of uh, off of iTunes because I don't think I ever owned a Wham uh, a Wham album in its entirety. Although I knew most of the songs off of Make It Big. So uh, again, just sort of pointing to the '80s and obviously Depeche Mode started there, and it's how I how and when I found the band. Um, definitely recommend going and uh, and checking out the uh, the Wham documentary that was just released on uh, Netflix. <laughs> All right, let's get into your listener feedback uh, this week. Not a lot. There was a few days between episodes and a busy week, especially here in the States with the 4th of July holiday. However, I do appreciate those that rode in. First, we hear from uh, from Danielle. Uh, it's me again, Danielle, the resuscitated devotee from Montreal. I finally caught up on all the episodes of Depeche Mode, the podcast, and by now it feels like we are old friends. My experience listening to all the episodes in order was a bit surreal. As you are a science fiction fan, I thought you'd appreciate this. I felt like a visitor from the future already knowing what was in store for the band and us fans. Every time you would start to speculate about what they were up to and what kind of music they put out, I kept thinking, oh man, they're, you're in for a treat. I found myself reliving the excitement of the journey leading up to the release of Memento Mori with you and other listeners, enough to give me goosebumps, even though I thought I heard everything. Anyways, I'm still gorging myself on all things DM. I have not listened to anything else in the past three months. I'm definitely uh, catching the second Montreal uh, show uh, in November. And uh, as I um, as I now don't want to miss any opportunity to see them live. Looking forward to continue this journey in real time with you um, and our friends around the world. Uh, cheers, Danielle. P.S., Thank you for mentioning um, in the in passing that Everything But The Girl came out with a new album. They were uh, quite up there in the 90s in my music rotation, and I'm thrilled that they have produced something uh, 25 years uh, later. So thank you, Danielle, um, from uh, Montreal. Uh, great to hear from you again. Uh, glad that you've been enjoying the, uh, the podcast as well. So I'm going to do something here. I know I had another listener uh, feedback and for some reason when I was doing my notes for the show it seems to have uh, disappeared on me so if you can indulge me for just um, one moment I'm gonna go and uh, track down uh, via my email that particular um, email that I got and I, I this happens on occasion I sit down and I do my um, I do my notes there I got it yeah, I sit down, I end up doing my notes, and then suddenly I'm like, I'm cutting and pasting my listener feedback uh, to uh, my uh, to my text file, and I lose one. So I found it, and thank you for indulging me while I live go and find this email. David Theofolt writes, uh, Here we are almost four months since the release of Memento Mori, and I'm still listening to it like I did when it first came out. My wife keeps asking me, again? I know I'm in the minority when I say this, but I have loved every Depeche Mode album after Songs of Faith and Devotion. I guess Exciter and Spirit have been my least favorites, but strangely enough, they have grown on me lately. Yeah, I find that happening to me as well. Is it weird to say that I think Memento Mori has made them uh, better? No, I don't think so. I actually would agree with that statement. I finally got tickets for the December 17th show at Crypto Arena, and I'm excited about that. The best part is I'm going with my wife, son, and daughter. This will be my 14th time seeing them for the first, um, seeing them and the first for all of them. I sure hope they are ready to see the side of their pops that they have never seen before. You asked a while back what everyone is wearing to the concert. Well, I had a custom white hoodie made with the black and white photo of Dave Martin and Fletch's shadow on the front and Depeche Mode on the back. Wearing that with white jeans and all white slip on vans. Yes, all white going with Rose Bowl vintage. As always, thank you uh, for putting in the work with this podcast. Us Depeche Mode fans appreciate you tremendously. Uh, David uh, Theofold. Thank you so much for that, uh, for that, David. Also, 
I want to go back briefly because I forgot in my uh, confusion there a moment ago. Where did I put them? Oh, here they are. Um, something else I wanted to share. I did not do a very good job prepping for this uh, podcast this week. Um, Danielle, your comment about everything, um, everything but the girl. Um, hat tip goes out to uh, my friend uh, Matt. Matt was the one that actually brought the new music to my attention, and I believe that's why I talked about it on the show. So I want to give Matt the proper credit where credit is due. If you're watching the video version on YouTube, you'll be able to see this. If you're listening, you won't. However, my mother sent me some early birthday gifts, which included a custom-made uh, happy birthday card, which I thought was uh, awesome, featuring uh, one of the uh, more uh, one of the more iconic uh, photos from uh, the Violator photo sessions of the uh, four band members. Also, these amazing um, custom um, they're they're coasters. Are just they're awesome. They look like albums. This one is for the Personal Jesus single, and it has all the details on it. With the, I mean, it looks just like the cover for it. The other one here is uh, just can't get enough, and uh, I had the card. Oh, where did I throw it? Here it is. <clears throat> uh, these came from Popsters, uh, Popsters.co.uk. Um, so these two here look like vinyl records that I have in my hand. This is the Personal Jesus and the uh, just, can't, uh, just Can't Get Enough one. I also have another one that actually looks like the CD cover for uh, for Violator, and that one's actually up where I sit most uh, most often. Um, I'm not using these ones because the stickers on the front, I'm afraid if they get wet, it might ruin them. The other one is uh, more of a of a solid with a uh, with a clear vinyl coat on the top of it. Um, so, uh, just awesome. My mom is the best. She knows me so well. She's not buying me Star Wars stuff. And this is all because I was talking about going, uh, with my buddy Matt in, um, in November to see Depeche Mode. And, uh, I, I hadn't talked about Depeche Mode for a while on the phone with her. And, uh, before I knew, before I knew it, after a few days, I got some awesome pre, uh, birthday, uh, Depeche Mode stuff. My birthday is, uh, the 8th. So I'm recording this on the 7th. So that's why I got those if you were curious. So, all right, that wraps up the show for this week. Before I let you go, though, I want to mention that uh, if you read and you like science fiction, uh, clearly you like Depeche Mode, uh, and you haven't yet, I hope you will take a moment and check out my science fiction space opera series, uh, Embark. I really would um, appreciate it. It's how you can go and uh, support uh, the uh, the podcast. Seven books at all in the uh, in the series. Um, written for adults, but great for kids as uh, for kids as well. Uh, Eleven and up. Uh, there's not there's no language in it. The violence is very much in the in the line of Star Wars. Uh, filled with a lot of uh, direct and indirect uh, references to Depeche Mode. They actually play a large part in the underlying themes and details of the story. The uh, protagonist in the story is a massive DM fan, even though it is set uh, in a 2172. Uh, but at the time in the story. Uh, the music of the 80s through the 2000s is nostalgic and popular among the characters of the book. So you can get all seven books in the series in ebook, paperback, hardcover, and audiobook at Amazon.com or MyNerdWorld.net. You can follow a ragtag squadron of pilots and one reluctant hero on a journey of survival across the galaxy as they fight for humanity's future among the stars. Also, I want to mention that if you uh, want to buy paperbacks directly from me, all you got to do is email me, talkshownerd at gmail.com, uh, and I'll send you details on uh, where you can send payment and how much they cost. Uh, the books basically run... Um, for the most part, twenty bucks a piece. Apart from uh, book four in the series, which is a bit shorter, um, it is a uh, a side story, but still a part of the overall saga. That one runs a little bit cheaper at, I believe, what did I have that priced at? I think they had that priced at thirteen dollars. This all includes shipping uh, as well. So if you buy them directly from me, um, it's cheaper than what you can get them off of Amazon. So these will be the uh, the paperbacks. And I can get them out to you fairly quickly as well. So if you're interested in, uh, you don't have to get them autographed, but if you want, you can get them autographed. Um, and I'll sign them to whoever you'd like. Uh, you can buy the books directly from me. Just email talkshownerd at gmail.com, and I will give you all of the details. All right. That wraps up the show for this week. Thank you so much for checking it out. Amazon.com, Embark, John J. Owen Justice, or MyNerdWorld.net, and email me your thoughts about the best band in the world, Depeche Mode, between now and uh, next week. I hope wherever you are, you are happy, you are healthy, and you are safe. I'll talk to you then. 
Alba. Hello, this is Martin Gore from Fresh Mode. Hi, this is Dave Gore from Fresh Mode, and you are listening to My 